Hi, I'm Patrick from Katoomba Camera House here with Steve and we're going to discuss some macro photography tips. Um, so Steve, you've been doing this for a fair while now, you've been teaching our courses on macro photography. Uh, what's your first tip for viewers? First tip would be uh, light because the word photography actually means to draw with light mm -hmm. and you have to keep that in mind with every single photograph, every genre of photography, whether it's landscape or macro, we don't actually photograph things we photograph light reflecting off things. So light is our paint that we paint with. So the quality of light, the direction of light, that has to be the first consideration with any photograph of any subject. If I can just quickly demonstrate that, I've just got a little LED video light here from ProMaster. And if we just use these flowers, we can see we can change the effect. So if we've got frontal lighting, flat lighting, it's not bad, a little bit of shadow there. But when you've got translucent objects, the ability to do backlighting is um, fantastic. Mm. It really shows things, if you like, pardon the pun, in a, in a different light. We've got bottom lighting. You can. It's also using a constant light source with macro. It's not as, as powerful as flash, but it also teaches you a lot about light and how it behaves. One thing which is invaluable outdoors, I've only got a large one here in the studio. But typically if I go out shooting macro in the field, I will take a small version of a reflector with me. Mm. And inside you have a transparent screen. This is ideal if a, a subject is in full sun. Let's talk flowers, not insects, because you pull <laughs> this out and they're gone. But say wildflowers, if you've got full sun heat in that, that's the worst light for photographing a flower. You want soft light. Mm -hmm. So all you do is put the scrim between your light source, the sun, and the subject, and you get beautiful soft light. Mm. Now these reflectors all also come with a silver backing. So if I've got a wildflower in, in the shade or in a, a crag in a rock, then I'll use the silver side to push light in. Mm -hmm. The great thing about these is you're never going to run out of battery because they don't need it. <laughs> um, they fold up nice and small, and you don't need a big one like this. You only need something 12 to 16 inches and they fold up into this size so they're easy to carry. Yeah. Another reason you don't want a big one, with our weather here, we get a lot of wind, you don't want to do a Mary Poppins with a camera. That's right, we'll be paragliding, that's right. That's right, yeah. yes. Um, so another tip in regards to macro photography would be the gear. So not every one of our customers uh, would have a macro photography lens when they start photography. So could you explain to us what the difference is between a macro photography lens and a standard lens? Yeah, certainly. And there's many ways to get into macro photography. I, I, I like to say good, better and best because the cheapest option, you can get some screw on filters that go onto your standard lens and it's just like a magnifying glass. Yeah. The downside of that is you, you lose image quality. You're shooting through another very thick piece of glass. The second way is extension tubes, which go between the lens and the camera body. And they, they work brilliantly. There's no optics in those, so you don't degrade the image. The downside is because you're making the lens longer, you lose light. Mm. The third, the best, and probably the most expensive is a dedicated lens. Now. It seems a lot to spend on a lens that only does one job. So I like to point out that a macro lens is actually, it, it does two jobs. It is designed to focus very close, hence it's a macro. It also lets a lot of light in, they're called a fast lens. Mm -hmm. The other thing that they're excellent for, because of their focal length and because you can open up the aperture and throw the background out of focus, they make an ideal portrait lens. So if you think you're getting two lenses, for the price of one, you're actually cutting the cost in half. Yeah. Okay. But definitely, you do need specialized equipment when it comes to the optics to do macro. Really, everything else, because everything is small, you can create a studio on a tabletop. Everything else, you can jerry-rig yourself, you can use, you don't need studio lights, you could use just video lights, you could use a table lamp. Um, you can make your own sets, you can make your own light modifiers that the lens is the most important part. Focusing is one of the biggest hurdles that most people have trouble with um, because they're relying on autofocus. Mm. Autofocus does work with macro, but only in certain circumstances. What I advise with macro is your camera goes fully manual and your lens goes manual focus. 
And the way you focus with a macro lens is not by, it, well, initially you'll turn the focusing, you might select the closest focusing point, but then to fine tune your focus, you actually have to move the camera backwards and forwards, and that will fine tune your focus. Having the lens open wide, something like a 1.2 or a 1.4, where the depth of field is quite shallow, is there a way that the uh, shot can still be put in focus in post-production, for example? Oh, that's, that's a tough one, depending on the equipment that they're using. Um, there are cameras out there that do automatic focus bracketing. So in case they don't have a focus stacking ability uh, in their current camera model, uh, is there a way for them to do it in post-production? Oh, sort of look, the best thing to do is come into Camera House and buy a camera that does do it. <laughs> Failing that, yes, you can do it with any camera. Yeah. The essential thing is the camera must not move between shots, so mm -hmm. it's got to be on a tripod and it must be manual focus. Mm -hmm. So you would focus on the closest part of the subject, take the shot, move it a millimetre in, another millimetre and just keep on taking photos. Most photographers now, well all serious photographers, are using the Adobe products, whether it's Photoshop or whether it's Lightroom. Both of these programs now do a phenomenal job. You just bring in that series of photographs and you go into, they, they, do, they call it a photo merge, mm -hmm. but it will select the sharp portion of each image and it will mask out the unsharp portion. It'll put it all together into a final image that gives you the whole, the whole um, fully focused macro shot. Yeah, correct. Right. Yeah. Great. So, Steve, in regards to focus stacking with uh, with programs such as Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop, does it have any other applications besides macro photography? You can use it for anything, um, particularly landscape work. Often, with landscape, you might have something half a meter in front of you. Uh, and you want that sharp, as well as the horizon 30 kilometers away. Yes, you can stop your lens down, you can close your aperture down to increase your depth of field, but once you go beyond a certain point, you end up with something called diffraction happening with the camera. It's purely the physics of optics and light, and it actually degrades the image. It increases your depth of field, but it degrades the image. So if you take a series of photos in landscape, you might only need three photos but at different focal points, and then use this merging technique. Not only can you operate the lens at its optimal sharpness when it comes to aperture, um, but you can get as much in focus or out of focus as, as you want. Okay, so great tips for our landscape photographers as well, thank you. Yeah. Do you have any other tips for us um, today regarding macro photography? Yes. Um, another big one is you really have to train your eye. Um, you'll find if you get serious about macro and you do a lot of macro, you see things differently. And you see things that other people don't. Um, I photographed a spider where my wife and I were out walking the dog one day. We walked past a tree and there was a spider in a knot hole of the tree. And he was so well camouflaged you couldn't see him. And I took a photograph. And she said, how on earth did you see that? I said, because I was looking for it. And as I walked by, I saw one leg move out the corner of my eye. You, you will get round to training your eye. The other thing is to be patient, especially with insects. With these lenses, yes, they focus close, but if I want to focus this close to an insect or this close, the trick is getting that close without scaring, scaring the subject. And it is quite an easy technique that I use also for bird photography, mm -hmm. or any wildlife photography really, um, which obviously an insect is a miniaturization form of um, wildlife photography. Um, but my trick is if I see a, a spider on a leaf, or a bird on the, on the fence, on a perch, I'll take shot straight away. Then I'll very slowly move in and take another shot, move in, take another. Eventually you'll get the shot that you want, hopefully before the guy freaks out and says, okay, that's enough, I'm out of here. So you do have to be very persistent. Some days it can be really frustrating, you're just not going to get the shot. Mm -hmm. But if you really want that shot, you will get it in time. You have to practice all the techniques, you have to inc increase your skill level. Nobody plays the piano overnight, and nobody's gonna nail macro photography overnight, but if it's your passion, you're gonna get there. Macro is something you can bring indoors. Mm. You can set up, I like to call it uh, tabletop photography. You set it up on your dining table. You're not limited to being controlled by the weather. 
and you can shoot anywhere. You can have, you can spend the rest of your photographic life in your back garden. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned some tips about photography today with Steve. So next time you're in the area in the Blue Mountains, please come and see us. We have a full team of photographers here, all too eager to share their knowledge with you. You're always welcome at Katoomba Camera House.